one, I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know, right, what they have done. They know. They fear that there is no other way to be human but the way in which they are human. Brittany Cooper is at it again. So the Rutgers professor, Brittany Cooper, has surfaced again because of the statements that she made back in like 2018, 2020, whatever, about white people being villains and that we need to take these people out and all this kind of craziness. Well, those comments, that video that she did, I actually did a rebuttal to that back last year. So I think it would be interesting since in honor of Brittany Cooper, getting in trouble again at Rutgers University, the professor there at the Women's and Gender Studies Department, I figured I would react to my own reaction to Brittany's video the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the video up. We're going to watch it together. And at the end, let's just talk about some of the things that I noticed about the early Dear Wolf Christian videos. So see you in a few. Yeah. It's rewind time. We're back. This is Dear Will Christian, the podcast, and I'm Jason. Thanks so much for stopping by today. This is a podcast that's aimed toward those who profess to be woke. Our, my desire is for you to consider what you've been told, what you bought, or maybe even sold in light of God's holy word, and to reject anything that doesn't hold up to his holy standard and doesn't make much of Christ. And as we already know, as Paul said, there is no other gospel. So today we're going to do a lot of groundwork, if you will. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the, the blog, which is dearwokechristian.com. I appreciate you all checking that out. Thank you so much. Now, let's jump into this. Today, we're going to look at, we're going to start with Timothy. And I thought it was interesting. This is one of the, what's called the pastoral epistles. Paul is writing to his young protege, Timothy, who's a young pastor. All that we understand it all. But I noticed it's interesting that Paul opens up. He does his usual greetings. He welcomes him and all that stuff. And literally the first thing he writes after his greeting is Paul is condemning false teachers. And I thought that, man, that stood out to something powerful. As I always do, and I encourage you, please read the entire text. This is a, a wonderful passage, but I'm going to focus today only on verse four, or rather three through four, please forgive me. As I urge you when I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine. So Paul already knew that there were some people running amok, teaching something different, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which promote speculation rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. Myths, endless spe speculations, or rather endless genealogies and speculations. They don't, let, they don't lend themselves to godliness. They don't lend themselves to growing in the faith. I think we can fairly see that. Then we're going to jump to his second letter to Tim. Verse, chapter 4. Verse 4. And look at the title. Look at the title of this heading. Of course, it's not inspired by God the Holy Spirit, but still, preach the word. Christian, our defense, our power, our ability is to stay in the word. Stay with pastors who preach the word. Teachers who preach and teach the word. That's our defense. That's the only, only thing we have. So Paul is admonishing Timothy to preach the word. And let's look at verse 4. Uh, let's build up. Let's do verse 3. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears. I don't have itching ears. I just want to put a hat on today. Itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into, there's that word again, myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Our ability, Christian, 
to stave off this critical race theory, social justice, or whatever, whatever the the flavor, the heresy du jour is, our ability to do that is through God's word. We can't do it by might. We can't do it by power, by eloquence, or any of that's the Lord knows not through elo eloquence. Look at me. But it is through the teaching and preaching of God's word. That's it. That's all our, our defense. And lastly, we're going to end up with Titus. And this is chapter 3, verse 8. Again, f please read all of these, all of this. Be ready for every good work. All right. Let's start with verse 8. The saying is trustworthy, and I want to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable to people, but avoid foolish controversies genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful and is self-condemned. Today we're going to listen to somebody who's warped. I want you to just listen to this. This woman does not profess to be a Christian that I know of, at least. She doesn't profess to be a Christian. She certainly does not profess or spout Christian ideology. This is a, uh, you may have seen her, and I actually did a video on her earlier, Brittany Cooper. She is a living train wreck. But I want to just focus on myths, endless genealogies, speculations and division listen to the words that she says because she i mean it's a lot now this is an abbreviated an abridged um segments kind of condensed down the whole thing is about 44 minutes i'll put it leave a description in down below if you want to watch the whole thing feel free this is also the woman that did a ted talk about time and that time is racist so uh let's go Villains in the aggregate, right? The real back up a little taste. I think that white people are committed to being villains in the aggregate, right? The real sort of issue here, and I, you know, I've heard people sort of say it is one. I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know, right? What they have done. We're already doing this already. Please understand that it used to be the notion that if you speak for an entire group that you have to be solid in saying an entire people group. Because of course you're gonna get people saying, well, not me, not 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 this person or so forth. So to be able to speak so authoritatively about everybody in a group is very troubling. I believe that she's just projecting her own wickedness because she has some pretty evil ideas that she espouses and that she supports. And they're, they're, they're scripturally vacuous. They have no biblical support. They are supported by probably by all those books on her bookshelf behind her, but not by the scriptures. The scriptures don't support it at all. But let's give her a shot. Duh. They know. They fear that there is no other way to be human but the way in which they are human, which is to, so you know, like you talk to white people and whenever you, you really want to have a reckoning about it, they say stuff like, you know, it's just human nature. If y'all had all of this Oh, okay. power you would have done the same thing right i've never met a person that said it. it's human nature too i've never heard anybody say that however watch this it is human nature what she's talking about is human nature our fallen sinful nature so the idea that white people are more of a sinner as i've said countless times before critical race theory is a cult the only sinners are white people that's it. So, uh, and she's saying it. So I'll back it up and let her just spit it out. And just ask yourself, could a black person be a sinner in this woman's idea? Can't. Again, I don't think she's a Christian. I don't think she's professed to be a Christian. Thank God. But even more than that, her ideas are being espoused by people in the church. But watch this. Let's dig back into that again. What she's saying about white people has no foundation whatsoever. So the idea that they have some kind of extra evil to them because they have less melanin, come on, Brittany. 
like, no, that's what white humans did. White human beings thought there's a world here and we own it. Prior to them, black and brown people have been sailing across oceans, interacting with each other for centuries without total subjugation domination. Okay. That last sentence is so ignorant. Black and brown people have been interacting with people, interacting with one another without in, in peace and harmony. Really? The Bible disagrees with that. Egypt subjugated Israel. Come on. Before white, less melanated, melanated people were on the scene or even in the discussion, we had Babylon. We had Assyria. We had to come on. There's countless examples of people subjugating one another. She's just making this up. And the adorable thing is she thinks that she's scholarly in saying it. So before people of less melanin, there was no war. Apparently, she's actually going to say on Africa, they were just living life normally without any kind of conflict. She's going to say that. Watch. And colonialism. We have seen uh, what a what a show this iteration of treatment of, of other human beings means. And that my hope is that we would do it differently, you know, in the moments when we have some power. We would. What, what would be, okay, so I'm speaking to Christians, listening to what she's saying, is there any hope that non-Christians, if they give their non-Christian power to another non-Christian group, that that other group is going to be any more righteous, any more holy, any more just than the group that they got it from? Endless genealogies foolish debates will not do it perfectly but i do think that all of us can sort of agree that a politics that says like there are superior and inferior human beings just isn't the way to go and where where, where is the politics that says that, that where is the where is the politics the law the edict that says that they are superior inferior human beings because keep in mind she is espousing that white people are inferior so where is this edict that you're saying besides the one that you're spouting? As I said before, this is a ministry. This is an activity of projection. They like to push out their own evil thoughts onto somebody else. And that's the thing that white people don't trust us to do because they are so corrupt. You know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power. That I don't even know what to say. They can't let, go, you know, they fear viscerally, existentially letting go of power because they cannot imagine that there's another way to be. It is either that you dominate or you are dominated. And isn't it sad that that, that is spiritually who they are and that they can't imagine. A she says spiritually a lot. I don't think I realized that the first time I watched this. She says spiritually a lot. And that's interesting because what she's saying is not supported by the spirit of God is not supported by scripture at all. I think that's, that's very telling that we can just use that term. Like, what do you, what does she mean? I have to, I don't know if I'm going to, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to try to find out what she means by spiritually because yeah, we're all spiritually are dead in our trespasses and sins. But see, that's why I keep bringing this to the point of we must know our scriptures. We must know that because otherwise we don't know how to properly deal with and properly navigate a world full of landmines like this woman's espousing sort of more expansive notion of the world. The thing I want to say to you is we got to take these motherfuckers out. But I know but like I forgot she said that mercy. We can't say that, right? We can't say, That's like, I don't believe in a project of violence. I truly don't. Wait, I don't believe in hamburgers, but I'm about to barbecue some hamburgers. Oh, no, I, I can't say that. I don't believe in hats wearing toboggans in the house, but I'm wearing a toboggan in the house. You can't say that. She literally said, we're going to take these MFs out. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. 
because I think in the end that our souls suffer from that and I do think that some of this is a spiritual condition so here is where I land most days about white people Um, and I actually have been helped in this by thinking about and I told y'all before like I don't believe by any means that I live in a neighborhood. I have neighbors of less melanin all around me. I don't believe for one nanosecond that any of these neighbors get up in the morning and say, gosh, Jason lives next door and he's black. I don't think they ever do. And also, I don't believe that they wake up and say, oh, praise the Lord, I'm white. I don't think they do. I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe they do. Maybe maybe they did. Maybe they have a shrine to their whiteness in their house. I don't think so, and I I don't believe so. But even greater than that, I don't care. I don't. When you transfix on other people to this degree of what they do, because please understand, and if you watch the whole speech or whatever this thing is called, this interview, she talks a lot about people of less melanin she knows their inner thinkings she knows their ideas she knows how they why they don't put salt on their food she knows everything about them wow They're like man like it's almost like she worships them indigenous people right see part of the challenge of, around whiteness is that it it's totally skews our view of everything, right? I gave this like TED talk about this some years back and one of the reasons I was trying to think about it is like the the world didn't start when white people arrived in America and tried to tell all the rest of us how things were going to go. There were And nobody's ever said that it does. Nobody ever I I, I mean, I don't know anyone who says that history in the world starts when a white person put pen to paper I I don't know anybody who did that and this ongoing drumbeat of clownery and foolishness only serves again as Paul said to Timothy For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching and have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and they will turn from listening to the truth and wander into myths. He said it to Titus as well. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. What this woman is espousing is worthless. It has no value. It's a scubalon, as Paul said about his own righteousness. Where people out here making worlds, Africans and indigenous people being brilliant and, you know, libraries and inventions and, you know, vibrant notions of humanity and cross cultural exchange long before white people. (laughs) I love that we can paint that there was no conflict in the world until she's literally going to say until people of less melanin showed up. I'm going to back it up. And, you know, vibrant notions of humanity and cross-cultural exchange long before white people showed up being raggedy and violent and terrible and trying to take everything from everybody. And that- So that's the only contribution that people of less melanin can contribute is that they're raggedy, violent, and trying to take everything from everybody. Okay. Endless myths and genealogies, they're worthless. That's really important because if we believe that history starts for us when white people drag us to these shores, then we can never. No, she literally contradicted herself. If why do we again, chattel slavery is a part of history. We can't ignore that. We can't say it didn't happen. Okay, got you. But to transfix and fixate on it, then that's on you. That's her, that's her fault. Tell us about these wonderful sunshine and rainbows situations. I, I, I mean, before slavery. Tell us how the white slave masters got the slaves. Tell us about that. Tell us about slavery on the African continent today. Tell us about those things. Never get outside of the notion that this is going to be our existential struggle. All things that begin end. White folks are not infinite and eternal, right? They ain't.
and neither are brown people, neither are black people, neither are any other people group. The book of Daniel taught us that. That was that's not revelation knowledge, ma'am. Ain't gonna go on for infinity and infinity. And that's super important to remember that white colonialism and imperialism has a beginning. And in my way of thinking about the world, that means it has an end. And so my way of thinking about the world. Just want you to hear she said that. So part of what we are trying to do is to imagine what it what are the steps that we must take to get to the other side of this very inconvenient, you know, epochal interruption of like black and indigenous world making. I mean, does that give people comfort on a day to day when you like just having to deal with white folks and the, tra you know, the travesties that they create and the sense that they want to destroy the planet? Nah, there is a world. Endless myths, genealogies, they're worthless. World beyond even our sojourn on the earth. And so whiteness is going to have an end date because it, it is not, despite what white people think of themselves, they do not defy the laws of eternity, right? Their projects are not so sophisticated that the natural laws of physics change for them. What is she talking about? I don't know any person of uh, again. Maybe maybe in her start in her studies or in her journeys, she's come across people who think that they're eternal. I don't know where that comes from. I think it's foolish. It's, it's speculation. Listen again. Paul already talked about this. Um, and when we sort of humble them in the in humble our own understandings of whiteness, it seems like the biggest giant that we face. But in the end, right, it is what I like to say is, you know, black folks were out here for centuries and centuries and millennia doing all kinds of wonderful things and probably some fucked up things, too. But whiteness is largely an incorrect. I might have to go back. She said, and probably some, she used an expletive and it bleeped it out. Probably? Really? Probably. Some fucked up things too, but whiteness is largely an, you know, an inconvenient interruption. And so we then get to ask ourselves, so why am I here in this moment of it? Like, damn, you know, why did I show up in this particular iteration? And it's like, well, I think we showed up in this iteration precisely so that we could um, help to figure out an end and a way to the other side of this, you know, uh, gargantuan historical tragedy that is is white supremacy but avoid foolish controversies genealogies dissensions and quarrels about the law for they are unprofitable and worthless and the person as for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. Again, I don't know if this woman, Brittany Cooper, professed to be a Christian, and that's not the point. The point is that if you are a Christian and you espouse these ideas, well, and keep in mind, this is where you're going. Even if you're just, you know, putting a Black Lives Matter square on your social media or doing small protests, this is ultimately where you will be, where white people are inferior and we must deal with the inconvenient part of history. That's and listen to what she said. If you go back and listen again, she said some very troubling things. She can say what she wants to say about, I don't advocate violence, um, but you just said it. You can't say that you don't when you just literally said it. This is the end game, is, is complete and utter foolishness. But keep in mind, if you profess to be a Christian, this is not our worldview. This is not, we don't have to subscribe to this. We can just look at this and laugh. That's why I do, dear world Christian, um, that's why I do the mockeries on the weekends because it's foolish. It is silly and it needs, it doesn't need to be treated with any level of, uh, of respect, any level of severity, of seriousness. It's silly. It's insane. It would be just the same as somebody who would run around in a bunny costume saying that they're a rabbit. Well, sir, ma'am, you're crazy. And if you don't stop, we're gonna have to get you some help. And if you want to, we'll just make fun of you. But again, that's why this 
well, that's why this is so important to, to know and to get into God's work because that's ultimately where we're going to find success. That's ultimately where we'll find our strength and our ability to ward off this clownery. Not in my own, not in my words, but in the words of God. This is Dear Will Christian, the podcast, an open letter format podcast is meant to encourage Christians to look at God's word and compare every single teaching that they have to God's word and to reject anything that doesn't stand up to God's word and doesn't make much of Jesus Christ. Um, thank you so much for supporting DearWillChristian.com, the blog. I really appreciate you liking, sharing, subscribing and commenting. Thank you so much for the comments. The comments have been very encouraging and uplifting. And I try to get in there, try to keep them energetic and fun and edifying. So I hope that I'm doing that. So until next time, grace and peace. Okay. We're done. I have to admit, that was actually kind of fun. I actually like watching what I was doing back then. So I, I had a couple of notes here, some things that I noticed while I was watching my own video. So I noticed, well, let's let's go with the, uh, we'll do good, bad, and ugly. Let's just do the bad real quick. I had no idea what I was doing with the camera. Uh, that nose down camera thing was horrible. And I was recording in Zoom. No affront to Zoom if you're doing conference calls is not so much when you're doing YouTube videos. So those are two things, definitely. I um, my, my audio sounded pretty good though. And I had no idea, I, I knew nothing about lighting. I know that I really could have improve that video by just changing the lighting because I was just using the lights in the room and I didn't know what I was doing. So, I mean, that would be it. I don't think it was anything bad except for the fact that, um, I mean, ugly, except I feel like the, the audio overall was not super, it was not really loud and crisp and that like that. And that's because the room wasn't sound treated. So that's it. I think it was really good that I went through the scriptures. I like how I did it, albeit I think it was a little bit long. I think I could have been a little bit more quick to the point um, to get to the the meat of the of the matter, the value statement, if you will. And um, but I don't. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad at all. I do think I did a good job of outlining my case. So um, that would probably be my good, bad, and ugly. But feel free down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. If you like me reacting to my own videos, let me know because there's a lot of things that are coming up in the news cycle that actually I have talked about before. And so I wouldn't have a problem pulling up a video that I've discussed and discussing me discussing that situation in the past, but it's really your future. I don't know, whatever I'm talking about. You know how I like to do it, everybody. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again. Grace and peace.